Games are kind of a unique application of computers in which you, can, you have to do lots of stuff. It's not you just add or you just multiply. You have to do an incredibly huge number of different processes. And so you're going to very easily decide, I need to do such and such, and find out that it's something that takes far too long. And also games are an application that needs things to be fast, because you want to deliver a nice, pleasurable experience to the, to the, to the player. And the player doesn't want to say, let me move uh, one step that way. And then your computer say, OK, great. Uh, just give me a day, and I'll work out what it looks like. Uh, you need things to have fast feedback. So even something that a, quant uh, a computer scientist might call efficient might not be efficient enough. So for example, taking, doing 1 divided by the square root of a number is something that doesn't take that long. A computer scientist would probably say that's, that's an efficient thing to do. But in uh, Quake Free Arena, they had to do a lot of it um, in a very short space of time to render the graphics. And uh, it was too slow. It was too slow to be able to nicely render this graphic. So there's a, there was a method that was used in Quake Free Arena called, called the fast inverse square root, which is a really weird hack that somehow gives you pretty much the same answer using maths magic. Um, so uh, that's an example of where you really have to get around the problem of, of computational complexity. Uh, also in game design, the complexity of things like uh, a puzzle or a level can also be measured. And that's um, relevant if you're... Also when you're generating a puzzle or a level, that you want to actually be solvable. So the computational complexity of, of generating a random puzzle might be quite easy because you just put random stuff everywhere. But you want a level or a puzzle that you can actually solve. And the computational complexity of doing that will depend on how you do it. Because you might, you might make it like, very easy and then just put a bit of random stuff that you know won't affect the solvability. But then that's going to be a bit of a, a rubbish level, probably. So uh, you're going to run into difficulties in how sophisticated you want to do this and also uh, how much time you have to, to verify that this is actually solvable. Uh, so as a, a place you can look for more information on this kind of thing, there's a, a paper from a few years ago called Classic Nintendo Games Are Computationally Hard, where people look at uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, the first two Zelda games, Donkey Kong Country, and Metroid, and analyze basically the computational complexity of these games. And they show that basic elements that you have within these games um, can give you levels that are, are very hard to solve the decision problem, which is, is this uh, possible to be solved? Is, this, is it possible to solve this level or not? And so this is a figure from that paper, and as you can probably recognize if you've played some early top-down Zelda games, this is one of the block-pushing puzzles where you have to push some blocks and you can only push them once and you have to get from one place to another. And uh, this is the kind of thing that can very easily run into complexity problems if it's too big. If you imagine, so usually you've only got a few blocks when you have to do one of these in an actual game. If you imagine one of these that's a thousand by a thousand blocks, then how do you solve that? It's going to become very hard very quickly. Um, so also, someone in the questions uh, talked about ray tracing. Well, I can't say too much about that, but I've also, I have got a, a screenshot here from uh, the Wikipedia article on ray, on ray tracing, which has a section on computational complexity. And you can find that it's quite an interesting uh, problem from a computational complexity perspective because you've got these uh, decisions, so you've got these problems where you can ask if I have a ray that starts at a certain point and goes in a certain direction and interacts with the surface, will it end up at a certain point or not? So this is the kind of minimum thing you need to know when you're ray tracing because you, you want to know where that ray is going to go, so asking whether it will end up somewhere or not is kind of important. And a lot of these are undecidable problems. So in turn, this is, this is kind, of, kind of the hardest problem you could ever have, 
because it's impossible. There is, it is impossible to write a program that can solve an undecidable problem because that would just break logic. Uh, so this is not something even you can throw a lot of computational resources at. It's just impossible. And that depends on the nature of uh, the surface that you're trying to do ray tracing on. So you can very easily, in ray tracing, run into problems of undecidability. So any program that you write is either going to be wrong some of the time or it's going to run uh, forever, which obviously you don't want. Also, um, you have, for things that are possible, you, depending on your surface, you can get things that are, are P-space or P-space hard, which might be something, coming at it from, from quantum computing, we often look at something like P-space and say, oh, that's all right. That's uh, pretty, pretty efficient. Uh, but actually, these can be quite, these can be problems that take quite a lot of time, and that depends on your surface. So you're, because of your computational complexity, you're bounded on what sort of surfaces you might want to have in your game, because otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to be either a problem that takes too long to run, or it just it runs into undecidability, which is really not a very good thing to have. Uh, also, I'm going to give you an example based on the traveling salesman problem. So maybe you want to make a game based on the traveling salesman problem. I mean, who wouldn't? In fact, there is a game, um, I think Math Mathematica, which is a package for doing maths, has, uh, is basically uses itself as a game engine for a version of a traveling salesman based problem. But anyway, I'll tell you what the problem is in case you don't know. Um, basically, you set a bunch of points and you can imagine these are cities, and there's some cost to move between them. So this might be just the distance, or it might be the amount of time it takes on the train, or it might be the amount it, it costs, or whatever. Some sort of measure of cost, and you've got a traveling salesman who needs to travel from one to the other, and uh, wants to do it in the most optimal way possible. So how do you find a path that connects all of these places in the most optimal way. And this is something that's computationally hard to do. The runtime of doing this is, is, is long. This is not so, an easy problem to solve. Uh, so it, it makes a nice puzzle. You could set a bunch of points. You could ask the player, uh, what's, the most, what's the best route you can find? And then the player will come up with a, a route. And then the player is going to want some feedback because uh, the player is going to submit a solution and it's going to expect you to say, yeah, or oh, that's not a very good one, try again. It's going to expect, you're expecting to get like, is this a one star solution or is this a three star solution? So you need some feedback as a player on what's going on. But if the computer itself cannot work out what the most optimal solution is, you're limited in, in how well you can offer that feedback. So you really you want the computer to know the solution to this puzzle. So it can say you can say, okay, you've got a solution. It's a good solution. It's it's not the best solution though. So you can move on, but you can try and do better. Um, so you're running into computational complexity issues there, where you you don't know necessarily how much to give feedback. So on the Mathematica version of this, which is of course not the, probably the best example of game design. Uh, they run their own approximate algorithm, which gets a pretty good guess of what the best solution is and gives you feedback based on that. Uh, but in general, that, that's not optimal and you might want something better. So in terms of puzzles that are computationally hard to solve or, or levels that are computationally hard to solve, you might run into issues on telling a player how good their solution was. Yeah, 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 yeah.